Just TV. And today we are going to make this amazing dress. On my Etsy shop, Stitches TV, you can now get one of my favourite patterns to make a raglan sleeve top. Now with this top, we make so many things. We make the bomber jacket. You watch how to make a bomber jacket tutorial. We also make the vintage scarf top using the same raglan sleeve pattern. Today, we're going to make a dress version. Now I've got it in sizes from size 10, which I'm calling my size, which is a 36 bust and a big waist, from my size, size, size 10, all the way to size 22. Now I will be using this pattern over and over again because I use this pattern like a pattern block. Today, we're making our dress out of this gorgeous, very famous, well-known Marimekko fabric. Using the raglan sleeve pattern, and I've got one meter, 10 centimeters of fabric, because whilst it's lovely, it's a bit expensive, but it's worth it. So I've got one meter, 10 of fabric, but remember my pattern is a size 10. Now the width of the fabric is 150. 50 centimeters wide so it is a wide fabric so you need to take a measurement that's from your neck right in there on your neck going down to however long you want your dress to be now, I've already done that and I'm having my dress at about 80 centimeters long so I'm measuring from the neck going down to the hem so I can see how much extra fabric I'm going to add onto the pattern because the pattern's for a top. If it doesn't actually fit into the width of the fabric, you can tweak the pattern a little bit. So have a look at what I'm doing. So I'm just drawing around the pattern. I can do it fairly roughly. Definitely taking notice of where we have notches because on my patterns, we rely upon those notches in order to be able to sew without pins. Now you might need to put weights like tin cans or body weights on top of your pattern to keep it down, but mine's quite flat. Now, as you see, it's going out right to the width of the fabric. So I'm going to take my pattern off and I'm just gonna change that angle of the top. So I'm going to come down because I want my dress to go out and I'm going to come down all the way down to the hem and then I'm going to do the same on the other side as well, the same sort of angle. But because I've lost my notches I'm just going to put those in the same position as the ones on the top but on the actual dress and then just cut that out because with our patterns to make it easy for you we have one piece that is for the front and for the back so it's not confusing for you and then what we do is we make up all the raglan sleeve seams and then we try it on and then shape the neck afterwards so remember our fabric is folded we're cutting two things out at the same time now usually we do have our fabric right sides together because i wanted you to see the lovely pattern i've got right sides up now do not ignore those notches those notches are really important to sew with our pinless stitchless sewing technique i just want to tell you something about the hem of uh, things that kind of go out a line um, and one of them is this now it goes out at an angle at the bottom. So if I tried to hem it, so imagine that the hem's going to be an inch and a half, it doesn't fit, does it? It's bigger than that. So what you need to do, you need to sort of mitre the edges to make sure that when you hem it, that your hem will fit. So it looks like that at the bottom now. Cutting out the sleeves. Now, because we're making another modification to our fantastic raglan sleeve pattern block, I'm going to show you how 
we can have a more gathered effect here on the sleeve because what we're going to do is on the top of our dress we're going to create a hem and we're going to thread elastic in all the way around now so we need to have this fullness here so usually what we do is we create a dart and we cut that out and stitch it out but I want you to go straight up so I'm going to show you how to do that for my first piece I'm putting it on the fold but I'm not going to cut it where the dart is. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue that line and keep this in here, this fabric in here. And then for the rest of it, we just trace out the sleeve as normal. So I'm cutting one sleeve out at the moment. So this is just one sleeve. Don't forget to do the notches. Now, because I haven't got enough fabric to do another one on the fold, I'm going to fold over the sleeve. That is important that you fold over. And I'm going to have a little bit of a seam allowance here. And then just do the same. Come up, because we want this fullness here. And then just draw it out as normal. But what we have to remember to do is to stitch up the seam here. Now we cut them out. Don't forget your notches on the sleeve as well. Now, especially with beautiful Marimekko fabric, keep that name on the salvage. Before I begin, the first thing I'm going to do is remember the sleeve that we couldn't get onto the fold because there wasn't enough room. So this one's on the fold, but this one isn't. I'm just going to quickly sew it up so I can pretend that it was never like that. So I want you to start about two inches down from the top. I'm going to put the fabric right sides together, centimetre seam allowance, on the mini JL, we're using D for the straight stitch, so forwards and backwards to start, and then just stitch all the way down, straight down. So using F on the mini JL, I'm just going to quickly zigzag that seam, but I'm going to stop just before the opening. So I've just given it a quick press. So now we're going to stitch up all of these raglan sleeves, every single one of them. But do you know what? There's no front and back to any of the patterns. So it's very, very easy. This is a sleeve. That's the armpit. So long as that matches up and our notches match up, then we're fine. And we're just gonna do that to all of the seams. So I've got my sleeve, I've got my dress, I'm going to stitch it up with a centimetre seam allowance and on a straight stitch. D on the mini JL. So I've stitched up one raglan sleeve. Now obviously I need to finish off that edge but I'm going to do it after I've done all of the raglan sleeves. So it will look like this. We're doing that part of the dress. So we need to do this side and then the back as well. So we've stitched up all of our raglan sleeves. So it's kind of like a bit of a poncho at this stage because we haven't done the side seams, but we don't do those yet, not until we finish the neck. So we've stitched up all the raglan sleeves and now we're going to do zigzag, zigzag all of those edges. So that's F on the mini JL. If you're not using an overlocker, it is quite nice to trim back your seams before you zigzag them because then they do look a bit neater. Okay, we have no front and back, so press your seams towards the sleeve. So you're going to be at this stage, you've pressed all your seams, stitched up all your raglan sleeves, and now you have to try it on so you can shape your neck. This is what we've got so far. So you have to try it on. Whoa. You have to try it on and you have to shape the neck. So I'm going to draw out, look in front of a mirror, and I'm going to draw out the shape of the neck that I want. Now all this kind of little bit of fullness stuff, that doesn't matter because we're going to thread elastic through to make it fit. So I'm going to go and have a look now and shape my neck. I think I'm happy. I've nearly finished. I've done it roughly. I think that's okay. So can you see what I've done? So I've shaped it like that. And I'm gonna cut it and then use bias binding. But you'll see in a minute. Get it back into its 
two-dimensional shape and have a look at where you've drawn it out to reshape the neck. So I'm going to trace that out and cut it. Now I will go halfway at the front and then flap it over so I get a mirror image on the other side. Now the back usually is quite high anyway so all I'd say is just bring it in and then just go off into nothing for the back. Bias binding. Bias binding is fabric that is cut on the cross because fabric cut on the cross stretches. See, there's a little bit of stretch. A bit like ribbing, really. Now, my bias binding is probably about an inch, two centimetres wide, and then they press back a hem. We put the bias binding right sides together with the fabric and we're going to stitch in the crease of that seam. So we're going to go backwards and forwards to begin with and we're stitching in the crease of that seam. It's like our sewing guide. Now when you sew with bias binding and particularly when you go through round the bends, you have to stretch a bit on the bends like we do with the ribbing. So I'm coming to a bend now. I'm making sure my press seams are going the right way and that the seams don't come undone from where we cut them. And I'm stretching it around, around the bend. So this is what we've got so far. Now I don't want, when you cut off the bias binding that's left, don't cut it really close to the seam. Cut it a little bit far away so you've got something to grab when you uh, trap it into that shoulder seam. Right, so what's going to happen is we're going to fold this over and it's going to go behind. But before we do that, we need to trim back all of our extra seam allowance. I'm trimming it back to about two millimetres and I'm being really careful, really careful, not to cut the dress. Now I can hear you all saying, oh it looks really nice like that, leave it like that. Now, if you wanted to do a stand-up collar, that is kind of how you do it, sort of, but we're not doing that today. I'm folding it back exactly to where that seam is and on the bend you kind of have to stretch you have to stretch the bias binding just a little bit and give it lots of pressing. Now I've pressed it into place, it's totally ready and it'll be a dream to sew. And I'm gonna sew it from the right side, feeling where the bias binding is underneath. So I've got the mini JL on D, which is a large straight stitch, but it comes out smaller. I'm staying equidistant from the edge and I'm sort of feeling where the bias binding is and then I'm being a little bit to the right of there. Now when you sew from the top like this, this is another stitch of speed sewing technique because it means that you can sew without pins. I don't need pins, look, why do I need pins? So I'm laying it in the way that it naturally wants to lay and I'm just feeding it underneath the foot, staying the same distance from the edge. So that's the wrong side and then that is the right side like that so now we're going to put the elastic in the channel that we've just created safety pin i put it in and out as if i'm doing a stitch with a, a needle in and out so that it doesn't completely pull out whilst i'm halfway through and then you just start pushing it through the little hem, the channel that you've created and you just work all the way around. You'll need to adjust the elastic and try it on because you might want it more or, or less gathered. Now if you wanted it really really gathered in the beginning when you cut out your pattern if you just slash down the front of that pattern and fanned it open then you would end up with more fullness at the front but I kind of wanted it with just a little bit of gathers. So I've worked out how long I want it to be so now so that it doesn't slip away I'm going to do a little stitch just on the edge there on the front and just on the edge there on the back so now it's safe to cut off the elastic the excess elastic 
Now I want you to put your dress right sides together now. We're going inside to the dress. Put your dress right sides together. And you remember that little seam that we left open? You're going to be really grateful for it now because we are simply going to put the right sides together and sew straight down backwards and forwards to begin with to trap the elastic in the seam. So I'm using the hand wheel because it's quite thick. We go backwards and then forwards and continue straight down that sleeve seam. I'm going to trim off the excess. Oh my to the edge a little bit and then I'm going to zigzag that and zigzag with F that last edge. Now whenever you put elastic in things do that thing where you stretch it out and release you get equal gathers all the way round and then I like my gathers to be pressed. The rest of it is easy we're going to do the sleeves, hem the sleeves, and we're going to do it like this. That's the sleeve. I'm going to lay it on the ironing board, and we're just going to fold back, first of all, a half centimetre hem, and press it, and then just fold back, hmm, what's this, two centimetres? and press that. So it's all pressed and crispy, just like sewing paper. We're not going to sew from that side, we're going to sew from the top and we're going to feel as we go. So I've got a straight stitch, that's D, and I'm just sewing straight along, but because I've pressed it, there's kind of like a ridge here, so I can see where the fabric is underneath. So it's easy, when you press it, it's really easy to get a really good hem. So look, I've done both sleeves and they both look really neat. So we're on the home stretch now. We've got to put the fabric right sides together, turn it over, right sides together. Starting at the bottom of the sleeve here, we're going to do centimetre seam allowance, go all the way down, match up all of our notches, very important, match up all of your notches as you go, and go all the way down. Now remember we've got that funny little bit down here at the hem, you've got to pivot the needle in there and then come straight out there. So follow the line of the seam. So using D, the straight stitch on the mini JL, do line up your notches. My fabric's really easy to work with, but yours might be a slippery fabric, so you must line up those notches. I've come to that bit where we've got the mitered hem. If you have a look, I want you to put the needle in when you get to the bit where it points out and then it goes in. Lift up the foot and follow the line of that seam there. And when you get to the end, backwards and forwards. So now you're going to trim back those edges and zigzag them and then do exactly the same on the other side. Very nice. I really like it. I can feel one of those moments coming. We're going to do the hem now and then it's done. Same as hemming the sleeves, I'm folding back a small hem first, which is about two mils. I'm folding back another hem which is about two centimetres. And I do that all the way around. But do you know what? I do the front first and then I do the back. So sewing from the top side again, I can see the ridge, but I can feel it too. Even though my fabric is not a stretchy fabric, I really like the look of a twin needle hem sometimes. If you want to know how to do thread up the machine for a twin needle and how to use a twin needle. I've got a video on Stitches TV called How to Use a Twin Needle. But if you want to see the back, look at the back. So it does this kind of zigzag stitch behind, which is why people usually use it for a stretch fabric hem. But look how gorgeous it is on the front. Ah. 
you remember that bit of salvage and I told you to keep it? Well, I'm going to show you what I do with it now. I cut some bondi web really thin. I've got mine about a centimetre. Well, about half the thickness of my actual strip. I've laid it onto the dress in the position where I want my label to be. I'm putting the label very carefully on top and then hoping that it doesn't move. I'm going to press with steam and with a hot iron to hold it in place. And that will be an absolute dream to sew. I'm gonna go all the way around the edge of the label with a straight stitch. Cue the music. I really, really love it. It looks really sixties, doesn't it? Wow, my sixties, Mary Mecco dress. Do you know what I was thinking? I think that this dress would be brilliant for kids. I'm just going to ask the famous Mirabel that made her very own party dress. Mirabel. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> this is Miri Mirabel. <laughs> Mirabel made her own party dress. Yeah. So I just want to check, Mirabel, would you ever wear a dress like this? If your mummy made it or if you made it, would you wear something like I this? I would wear it for a prom or something. Would you? That must mean it's amazing. Thank you for watching Stitches TV. Don't forget to leave your comments and look at the Facebook page. <laughs> if you want your pattern to make this dress, go to Tree's Etsy page. Stitch this TV!